Welcome to the Sonarx software overview of the Sonance DSP amplifiers. This is the first of three videos to help you navigate and configure your DSP amplifier. At the heart of the new DSP amplifier is an IP configurable and controllable web-based software called Sonarc, which stands for Sonance Advanced Room Correction. Before we start with the General Settings tab, there are a few global aspects of the software we want to familiarize you with. First, all the tabs of the software can be seen at the top of the page. Tabs not currently active will be in gray, while active tabs are in white. You can select a tab at any time by clicking on that tab. Second, when viewing a tab's content, you will see that it is sectioned off into horizontal rows marked with gray blocks and labeled with that section's function. Finally, in each section, there are buttons organized into three different colors for inputting your selections. The orange buttons are free type fields, meaning that you may input whatever you like in those fields. Once entered, your text is automatically stored. There are no save or enter functions required. You can, however, go back and re-edit these fields if needed at any time during the setup or operation. The blue buttons are pull-down menus or toggle function buttons. You will use these to choose preset selections or preset functions. The green buttons are used for single action functions such as printing a report or importing and exporting files. The first section you'll be working with in Sonarc is the IP setup area. DHCP on off is the first option in IP setup. All Sonance DSP series amplifiers ship with DHCP on. In most installations, DHCP should be left on. If you are controlling the DSP series amplifier using IP, then we suggest you turn DHCP off and use a static IP address. The second setting in the IP setup section is the IP address. When DHCP is on, the current IP address will be displayed. To change the IP address, DHCP must be set to off. When DHCP is turned off, the IP address the router assigned the amplifier will still be applied. The IP address is a good place to start since we know it is not being used by any other network device. If you wish to change the IP address, you should perform a scan of the network and only assign an unused IP within the range of your router. As a general rule, only change the last three digits of the IP address in the amplifier settings and only assign numbers between 1 and 254. Following the suggestion will minimize the chance of making the amplifier inaccessible. It is critical to type in the correct IP address. If the wrong IP address is typed in and the changes are accepted, the amplifier could become difficult to access requiring additional software to discover what the IP address was changed to. Make changes to the IP setting only if you fully understand network setup. The third setting in the IP setup section is the IP subnet mask. This is an advanced network setup function. Under most circumstances, this field should not be edited. Making changes in this field should only be done by experienced network administrators. If you have any questions about DHCP, subnet masks, or networking in general, you may want to consult the network administrator on your project. To the right of the IP setup section is ID amp mode settings. In this area, you can toggle between on and off. This will flash the backlit power switch located on the front of the amplifier. This feature is a convenient way to identify the current amplifier being configured in a rack full of Sonance amplifiers. Once identification of the amplifier is complete, deselect the flash function and proceed down to the Backup Restore section. The Backup Restore section will take all of the input-output settings and all of the DSP settings and encapsulate them into one file allowing transfer of those settings to another Sonance DSP amplifier. 
For dealers who consistently use a base settings file for all of your projects, this is an efficient way to transfer those settings across multiple amplifiers. To upload settings to the amplifier, click the green Restore button. A window will appear prompting you to select the source amplifier file. To download a backup of all of your current settings, click the green Backup button. Again, a window will appear prompting you to select a location and confirm saving the file. The settings file downloaded from the amplifier are system agnostic and can be saved and transferred to either a Windows or Macintosh operating system. Please note that the amplifier settings file can only be transferred to similar models. For example, the DSP-8130, being demonstrated here, can only transfer backup and restore files to another DSP-8130. To the right of the Backup Restore section is the Print Settings area. Clicking the green Print button will open a new tab in the browser displaying all of the current settings on the amplifier. This page can be printed and used as a hard copy record of the amplifier settings. The report displays information from the General Settings and In and Out Settings tabs. In the Auto On settings, you can choose the method for turning your amplifier on. The amplifier has five options to choose from. Voltage, IP, IR, Audio, and Power Button. To select your method, click the blue field beside Auto On Method. The default selection is Power Button. However, you can scroll through the pull-down menu and choose from the other four choices. It is important to note that if you select audio as your auto on method, the amplifier will shut down approximately 15 minutes after no audio signal is detected. This is a power saving feature that allows the amplifier to comply with the EU.5 watts power standby standard. The amplifier will not turn on again until audio is connected to the amplifier. There will be a noticeable audio delay of approximately 8 to 12 seconds once an audio signal is restored to the unit. Likewise, if you select voltage as your auto on method, you will need to remove the pre-installed jumper to connect your cable. It is strongly recommended that you set the auto on method to power button to avoid unintended shutoffs while configuring the amplifier. You can return at any time to this setting and select the final method of Auto On for your installation. Below the Auto On method is the Auto On Delay button. Here, you can select the interval of time delay 0 through 20 seconds in increments of 2 seconds when the amplifier powers up. This feature is helpful when you want to stagger the turn on time of multiple amplifiers to avoid a power inrush or because of unstable power on a project. Once you have selected your auto on methods, we will move on to the final settings on this page in the info section. The info or information section is a free type section where you can enter in important details of your project from the amplifier name, amplifier model, customer name, dealer name, installer name, and installation date. A maximum of 15 characters can be entered in these fields. The firmware version and serial number will be automatically filled in and cannot be changed. Please keep in mind that all of the content entered here will be displayed on the printed settings report generated in the print section of the tab. So that completes the general settings tab of the Sonarc software and the basic settings of your DSP amplifier. In the next video, you will learn how to set the inputs and outputs of your DSP amplifiers on the In-Out Settings tab.